Hello guys and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. My name is Elizabeth and I film true crime videos, solved and unsolved. So there's a bit of both if that's what you're into. So for today's case, we're going to be talking about a case that is technically solved, but without getting into the details, I wouldn't say it's as simple as saying it's a solved or unsolved case. It's very complicated and bizarre. So without further ado, let's just get into it. So today's case is going to be covering the Phillip Island murder and the murder of Beth Bernard and the disappearance of Vivian Cameron. So Vivian and Fergus Cameron were a well-known couple from the small island of Phillip Island, South East Melbourne, Australia. Fergus Cameron came from quite a prominent family on the island and was actually a founding shareholder of the Grand Prix circuit on the island. Vivian moved to be with him on the island in the 1970s after she fell in love and they got married. Although because Phillip Island Island was such a tight-knit community, Vivian definitely found it hard to fit in at first and she felt like she was a bit of an outsider and it definitely took her a moment to feel like she was really part of the island and part of a community. But in time, she began to make friends and really fit into the community, with them later having two sons. However, by 1985, Vivian began noticing a bit of a distance between her and her husband and began suspecting that he might be having an affair. And she suspected that this affair was with the young young farmhand working on their property named Beth Bernard. So Beth Bernard was a 23 year old woman living at her parents property on the island and she actually met Fergus Cameron whilst working at the Phillip Island Penguin Parade where he was also a volunteer. Only four months later he had hired her as a farmhand on his property and they began an affair. Vivian as I said growing suspicious began to do everything she could to try and save their marriage. Her father had actually left her mother for a younger woman when she was a child so she definitely felt like she didn't want her two sons to experience that same thing and she just really wanted to try and save their marriage and prevent her sons from having a split family. So on the night of September 22nd 1986 Fergus had been visiting Beth at her parents home and her parents were not actually there at the time so they were just there alone and he left Beth at around 9 p.m returning home to Vivian at 9 20 p.m. When he returned Vivian and him began engaging in a bit of a conversation about their marriage and and it later ended in him confessing to having an affair with Beth. And Vivian actually, in a fit of anger, ended up smashing him over the head and back with a wine glass. And the injuries were bad enough that she actually offered to take him to the hospital. So while Vivian and Fergus went to the hospital, Fergus's sister, Marnie, actually looked after their two sons. And Marnie and her husband, they found a lot of blood throughout the house from Fergus's injuries, so they actually cleaned that up for them. Vivian and Fergus returned from the hospital at around 12.30 a.m. And after further discussions, they decided that they would proceed with a divorce. They agreed that Fergus would stay on the island with the children and Vivian would move back to Melbourne to live with her parents. After this discussion, Vivian drove Fergus to stay the night at his sister Marnie's house and she returned home. Around 3 a.m. that night, Vivian called a friend of hers, Robin Dixon, and her husband actually answered and she asked them if they could come and watch her children for her. Around 5 a.m., Vivian's Toyota Land Cruiser was spotted on Phillip Island Bridge. The next morning, Robin called Fergus Fergus after Vivian had not come by to pick up the children and he'd not heard anything from her and she'd not heard anything from Vivian and so Fergus actually tried to contact Beth but he couldn't get a hold of her so he sent his brother and his brother-in-law to pop by Beth's apartment just to make sure that she was okay but when they went in to check on her they found the body of Beth Bernard. Beth had been stabbed to death, her throat cut and she actually had a letter A carved into her chest and a lot of people think that this was a reference to the scarlet letter and that the A stood for adulterer. When police arrived on the scene they found what they believed to be the murder weapon nearby and they determined that Beth's killer had wiped her blood on her own body then washing the blood off in the sink and having a few cigarettes before leaving. Beth's friends quickly informed authorities about her affair with Fergus Cameron as well as the fact that Fergus was married to another woman Vivian. Although Vivian Cameron could not be contacted and she still had not come by to pick up her children from the night before. At 3 p.m that day Vivian's land cruiser was found in the same place on the Phillip Island Bridge. On examination inside the car, they found Vivian's handbag, cigarettes, a carving knife, and a blood-stained rag. A neighbor of Beth's actually reported seeing the same land cruiser approaching Beth's property at around 3.30 a.m., which would be consistent with after she had called her friend Robin to look after the children. So Vivian instantly became the prime suspect in Beth's murder, but 
they actually believe that she committed suicide after committing the murder, but they could not locate a body. And this is despite extensive searches of the river and the area, there was absolutely no sign of Vivian's body. But one year after the murder, a coroner's inquest stated that Beth had been murdered by Vivian, and another inquest two years later stated that Vivian had committed suicide. When DNA testing became more readily available in the 1990s, investigators were able to retest some of the DNA that they had recovered from the crime scene. This included the handle of the knife believed to be the murder weapon, as well as a blood-soaked towel recovered from the crime scene, which both had Vivian's blood on them. Police believe that this just confirmed the coroner's inquest that Vivian was guilty of the crime. Basically, this just seemed like a pretty open and shut case. Everyone kind of believed that, yeah, it makes sense. A heartbroken Vivian found out her husband was having an affair with a younger woman and murdered her and then could not take the guilt, so she killed herself. Although there are plenty of inconsistencies within this theory, which I will go into now. So firstly, Glenda Frost, which is a good friend of Vivian's, actually stated that she received a call from Vivian at around 10 a.m. on the morning after the murders. She said that the phone call was completely normal and that she was just asking about gifts for another friend. She also did not notice anything out of the ordinary with Vivian and at first police thought that Glenda for sure just had the dates mixed up and there was no way that could have been Vivian but one of Glenda's other friends Pam actually confirmed that she was with Glenda at the time she had received the call and confirmed that Vivian had called her at 10 a.m that day and that it was definitely the day after the murders and I do agree I think that if it were just Glenda saying this I would say like maybe she did just have the dates wrong but for both of them to be saying that it was definitely that day it's like it really makes you think a lot more like what's it like maybe maybe they're right like she, they did receive a call from Vivian. Furthermore, a journalist called Richard Schmeisel, I think is how you say it, Richard Schmeisel, had known everyone involved on the case and he said it was apparently quite well known that the Camerons had marital issues and that Vivian had actually confided in him before that if she were to ever leave Fergus, she would take her sons with her. And he actually believed that she was not capable of committing this crime because she would absolutely not want to do that to her sons. And a lot of other friends also came forward and said the same thing, that this is just so out of character for Vivian she would never want to leave her sons like that which I think it makes sense because like as I said earlier her big thing was that she did not want her sons to grow up with a split family so in theory that makes sense but I also feel like when it's coming from your close friends like of course your close friends are not going to think that you're capable of murder to me that's just a given like if you think you have a close friend that's capable of murder i'm sure they would not be your close friend so it's an interesting one to think about but definitely like a lot of her friends were sure that like no this is not vivian but this is where things i feel like get a lot weirder in terms of inconsistencies in the theory that vivian murdered beth so the case actually received a lot of interest from an author named vicky Petratus, and she actually spent two years researching the murders and ended up writing a book called the philip island murders but for unknown reasons this book and any other articles relating to the murders or the book were completely blocked from being published on the island but Vicky Petratus actually contacted one of the forensic scientists that worked on the case back in 1986 and he said that he was not sure that the weapon that they had as the murder weapon was actually the murder weapon and this is because Beth actually had a number of strange double cuts on her which he did not believe could have been inflicted by that weapon so Vicky sought out the opinion of a knife expert and she found that there was actually a popular knife in the 80s that had a straight blade and two Two prongs near the handle and he actually believed that this could be possibly the murder weapon and would have been capable of making those double cuts. Additionally a private investigator brought in by sensing murder also believed that there was quite a bit of evidence that pointed away from Vivian being the murderer. So the private investigator discovered a towel in Beth's bathroom with only Vivian's blood on it. When the killer wiped Beth's blood on her legs that towel only had Beth's blood on it and none of Vivian's. If Vivian had injuries, as would be suggested by her blood on the towel, you would expect blood to also be on the other towel as well. Additionally, large amounts of blood were also found in the Cameron home, including large amounts of Vivian's blood. Although earlier in the evening when she had attended the hospital with Fergus, she was not treated for any injuries. So any injuries that she had sustained must have occurred after the fact of attending the hospital. The investigator also noted that large amounts 
amounts of evidence had gone missing or just had not been investigated by police because the private investigator actually found another piece of paper on the island that had Beth's blood on it and a witness had confirmed that he had seen this piece of paper before midnight which would mean that neither Vivian nor Fergus could have committed the murder because they were at the hospital although for legal reasons the witness cannot be contacted or identified nor the house that the piece of paper was found at so this evidence was completely disregarded. He also found recordings where Beth had stated that she had been dating a man that had been stalking her prior to the murder although the man was never questioned and he actually left the island a short while later. These leads were not at all followed up by investigators which I think seems a little sketchy and I know that they felt like they had a clear case but like including the fact that they don't even have Vivian's body to me to just ignore other leads is like so careless and it seems like they kind of just had a theory and stuck with it. Also at the time of the murders no one had actually ever successfully committed suicide by jumping from the Phillip Island Bridge which of course also doesn't mean that like Vivian couldn't be the first but it's just another thing that points away from that being a solid theory. So Richard Schmeitzel actually believes that because of Fergus's prominence and the Cameron family's prominence the police actually kind of did a bit of a cover-up of the murder and many locals believe that they didn't do a thorough investigation and as I said a lot of evidence was ignored or disregarded especially with any articles or books that question the police's theory being blocked from publishing. I think they really just wanted to push this theory that Vivian murdered Beth and like that's that. So in terms of ways that people think that this could have gone down a few people believe that Fergus had killed Vivian and then gone to Beth's house in a panic and to clean up but Beth freaked out that he had just killed his wife and then he actually realized now he has to kill Beth too because she knows what he's done. In a way I think that this could make sense because Fergus could have told Vivian about his affair with Beth and she said no I'm taking the kids with me because as I said Vivian really loved her two kids and she didn't want to leave them and she didn't want them to have a split family or experience the same thing that she had growing up so maybe she said that she was going to take the kids with her and Fergus didn't want this so he murdered her and then as I said drove to Beth's house and she basically freaked out that he had just murdered his wife for her and then he murdered her as well. The only thing with this is it would have to be between when Vivian had called Robin to look after the kids but before the Land Cruiser was seen approaching Beth's house which would have had to have been between like 3 and 3.30 that he murdered Vivian. I guess it kind of still doesn't make sense that Vivian asked Robin to look after the kids like that's weird but that's one theory that there is definitely out there. Also I think it's interesting that when Fergus heard that Vivian hadn't been by to pick up the kids in the morning that his first thought was to get his friends to check on Beth and to contact Beth. Like if your wife has not come to pick up the kids why would your first thought be to check on Beth? Like, like maybe he was just doing that anyway but it seemed like he really sent these two guys to make sure she was okay but why would you think that she wasn't okay unless you knew that she wasn't okay i don't know that's just like my own skepticism some people also look into the fact that uh, beth's body was actually covered with a quill and this kind of goes both ways so some people think that this points towards it being a female killer because of like the guilt and wanting to cover her up and some people think that this points to a guilty fergus like if he just murdered the woman that he wanted to be with and he felt so guilty that he covered her up so that's like another point to keep in mind of course there's also the theory that an outsider killed beth and that vivian had gone by to beth's house to basically discuss the fact that she knew they were having an affair and just been at the wrong place at the wrong time and he murdered them both but there's not a lot of evidence that points towards that and there's a lot of inconsistencies in that as well but I think with the evidence that kind of suggests that and the evidence that was ignored that's definitely a theory as well. To be completely honest with you I don't think that there is one theory that makes 100% sense like the police's theory like the what they've confirmed the theory that Fergus killed Vivian and Beth like none of it makes sense there's literally inconsistencies in every single theory that's been proposed and the case is just so weird like the fact that there's so much of Vivian's blood in the Cameron home and then the fact that there's Vivian's blood in Beth's home but like not mixed with Beth's blood like it seems to be quite separate makes no sense like for Vivian's blood to have been in the Cameron home Vivian would have had to have been injured before she even went to Beth's place but then who injured her it must have been Fergus I don't know also the fact that they never recovered a body of Vivian's like some people 
people even believe that she could still be alive and that she just like made an escape basically which i guess is completely possible but again from what i've read and what i understand i just feel like she wouldn't leave her kids no matter how hurt she is i just don't like i feel like for her to just leave her kids would make no sense but i do feel like there's definitely someone out there that knows more than they're letting on whether that's fergus or someone else i don't think that the case is as simple as vivian murdering beth and then just like killing herself and no one else knowing anything i think there's definitely stuff we don't know and the police did such a bad job and they just completely ignored evidence completely closed themselves off to other theories which is so frustrating because of course if you only focus in on one theory you're only going to have one outcome but i feel like they could have investigated other like theories for beth's murder but yeah so the case is technically solved and they do believe that vivian murdered beth and then killed herself but there's a lot of skepticism around whether it is actually solved and whether someone else killed Beth or whether it was Fergus. I'm sure as you guys know it's completely plausible for cover-ups to happen when there's a prominent family. I don't know if you guys have seen the Murdoch documentary on Netflix recently about Alex Murdoch and Paul Murdoch and Maggie Murdoch and their murders and like how powerful they were in that town. I think that that's definitely interesting to keep in mind when you're looking at a case like this. But that's everything that's all the evidence so i hope you guys enjoyed the case please leave your theories down below as well like what do you think happened do you think fergus did it do you think vivian did it do you think someone else did it do you think she's still alive like i'm so interested to hear what you guys think as well and also if you guys have any other case suggestions please leave them down below as well i'm always open to hearing that and yeah i hope you enjoyed today's video and i'll see you in the next one